This is number two of what I call the Corrupti series. It has nothing to do with political corruption, but has a lot to do with uh, visual corruption, which happened digitally. One of my flash drives got very badly corrupted. And these are the things that happened. Uh, it, it's interesting. I wish I knew how, how it happened, because I wish I could make these effects come about. This was originally a view out the kitchen window. And this pinkish part came up from the bottom and just did that, kind of like magic. One time I was studying Japanese aesthetics, and they had a great appreciation of uh, the things that happened by accident. I mean, it's nature actually contributing something to a work of art. That's a building that I one time worked in. It was the old grist mill over at St. Vincent. And you can see how the digital corruption came up and this far totally altered things. It also alters things laterally. You see how it took the chimney of the old mill and like slid it over this way? And this whole thing is the body of the mill and it really slid that over that way. And I have no explanation. I'd like to get one. We are looking now at what was an etching of an old building that sat in Crescent, Pennsylvania, beside the railroad. It was a thing called the Mountain House. My old aunts remembered the place, remembered their father taking them there right before it was to be torn down, which was probably in the neighborhood of 1910. But the image was black and white etching, which, you know, everything got changed. This was a courtyard out of a uh, window where I was living in a factory out of Grapeville, developing it as studio space, living, working, exhibiting space for artists. This is at a place that St. Vincent owns up on Chestnut Ridge. St. Boniface Chapel up there and most of it, half of it is, is intact, the bottom half is not. Uh, this was a friend of mine who had received a good letter, she was reading it and I did a drawing of her as she was standing there and this is what nature contributed, this much of it. This was an old building at St. Vincent at La Trobe. It was Bede Hall, which has been torn down in the course of time. And this is what nature did to it. It contributed these strange things. Now, I was in Harrisburg and did a drawing of a railroad bridge going across, across the Susquehanna. And that drawing had none of these bars going across it, as you see here. That's just what uh, happened. It's called vis visual or digital corruption. This one defies logic. I have not a clue what this was. I, I really don't. I mean, obviously, this is something that I did visually. But I don't have any memory of what it was or, you know, what I was trying to do. But this is what nature contributed. This is looking up at Seton Hill at Greensburg. It doesn't look like it's much corrupted, but it is. And the corruption will show up. There is a line going across here, and above there is somewhat corruption. The rest of it is just kind of screwed up color-wise, but I'm not going to really complain about it. That was a piece, <coughs> quiet, piece of machinery I was photographing down in Washington County. And uh, I was helping the uh, History and Landmarks Foundation survey some of the industrial sites. And the corruption is this lower part of it. 
That's one of my non-objective paintings that I did out at that factory in Grapeville that I mentioned. And the corruption is pretty much all over. None of the colors were in the actual image that I did. And uh, I don't want to try to explain it because I, I don't know what happened to it. Now this is an image of some of the buildings at St. Vincent right after the fire, the big fire, 1963. This is the uh, apse of the basilica. This is the roof of the choir chapel. This is the story that has been removed up there by the big 1963 fire. Eventually, this building was partially torn down. This is another one that I have no explanation for at all. I mean, it's obviously something that I did, some visual piece that I did, but I don't want to pretend that I know what it is. It's just nature intervened in the form of visual or di digital corruption. This was an old crane that I photographed in Brooklyn, New York. And the rest of it was done by digital corruption. This is a bit harder to talk about. This is a house that I lived in. I moved into there when I was about three or four years old. It was on East Ogle Street in Ebensburg, Pennsylvania. I lived there until 1960 when I left home. And you can see the uh, digital corruption came up this far, leaving the rest of it intact. Actually, that's, that's a self-portrait. I was at a wedding. And down at uh, the old Cochran Mansion, <coughs> down in Fayette County. And this is what digital corruption did. This was that courtyard out at the factory in Grapeville that I mentioned. It's been turned about 90 degrees clockwise. That's the Arch Abbey Basilica at St. Vincent at Le Trobe. I was drawing it from down toward the orchard, down by the reservoir. And this is what digital corruption happened to contribute, or nature, if you want to speak of it that way. That was Cormac O'Hara, one of these guys that looked like somebody from Shakespeare's time. I was working on a family history project and found this guy, Cormac O'Hara, killed in 1612 by a, an O'Connor. My mother was an O'Hara. I come from the O'Hara family. And you can see digital corruption did its work. That was in the backyard, looking out toward the neighbor's garage. This part above here is uncorrupted. This lower part is where digital corruption was doing its work. That was one of the paintings that I did out at the factory in Grapeville. This interesting part over here was contributed by uh, digital corruption. I was working on glass pallets. The place was a glass factory and there were a lot of these old glass pallets that I used to work on. They were the pallets that glassware was placed on when it came out of the ovens. Again, I don't have a clue. That's down in Youngwood. That's a caboose that was pulled in there to sit as a uh, reminder of the days when railroad was big in Youngwood. That was the uh, that is the railroad station in Youngwood, and we see digital corruption coming up and intervening. Debbie draws. 
I was in a, uh, a drawing class at Seton Hill, probably around 1970, and this was one of the girls in the class drawing, and I was drawing her. And I'm not going to try to pretend that I know what this one is. All I know is the corruption comes up to this point, and everything above that point is something that I did. Whoops, that's not quite true. There's another point of corruption's intervention. So I don't, I don't know what it was, and I'm not worried about it. And I'm sure you're not either. This was from the summer of 73 in Brooklyn, New York. I was teaching a bunch of kids. I was going to Pratt at that time studying art and in the summertime the Pratt kids would sometimes work with the uh, the local kids uh, teaching them you know various things they were mostly kids from the inner city who needed some kind of help I mean they were you know the kind of kids who appreciated somebody to pay attention and help them out here and there this is an old painting that I did of the factory at Grapeville I did it for Charles West Wilson, the grandson of one of the founders of the factory. And digital corruption here has also intervened. That's Altoona, Altoona, Pennsylvania. Looking west down the main line, this is the control tower, block signal carrier here. And I get the feeling that maybe I've gone far enough with this and I should push F11 and say so long as we finish up number two in the Corrupti series, a series of visual corruption. Okay, bye now.